Yes, absolutely. Um, first of all, thanks for coming. Um, appreciate your attendance here tonight. Um, uh, I've written a book in collaboration with uh, Mr. Col Jonathan Coleman over here, who's with you. I want to ask him some questions. That was an um, extremely difficult book to write, but something um, that I think should have been written because I do think there's some lessons in there for people who live like like I've lived. And um, it's really not pleasant to talk about. Uh, the last couple of weeks haven't been a lot of fun for me because I have um, hidden a lot of things in my life uh, over the years. And um, so anyway, um, ask me anything. I'll be more than happy to answer it. And I will answer it truthfully, OK? So. Jerry, uh, I always thought that you were such a perfectionist that that was the reason you didn't coach longer than a couple of three years. Uh, is that accurate or um, is it close to that? Mickey, my personality would never <clears throat> allow me to be a coach, even though I think I had a wealth of knowledge to, um, to impart to particularly young kids who are, are really trying to feel their way in, into the league. Um, but it's just not something I was, I disliked myself so much that um, I didn't even know how to treat my own self, much less uh, kids who were there to learn and obviously to try to live their dreams. And uh, uh, to some extent, I wish I'd been a different person because I think I could have um, imparted some things that would have been good. And the ironic thing was is that at that period of time, you know, I, I was I was a much different person than I am today. Um, the thing that makes me feel best in this world today is try to help and to give and also to try to, um, particularly the young kids that uh, want to ask questions. But uh, I am a different person than I was then, and uh, I was fighting a lot less demons uh, today than I was then. Uh, Mr. West, uh, Ben Aduccio with West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Uh, was it always your intention to write a book about these experiences? How much of the, the process uh, was your own motivation to, to write a book uh, about uh, your life, and how much of it was others saying, you know, would you be interested in writing a book? Well, you know, I think sometimes uh, there's one line in this book, uh, a white album, Joan Didion, said people tell themselves stories to live, in which to live, and I've done that. I've done it all my life. And I think sometimes you get tired of, of people embellishing who you are, not really knowing who you are. I mean, I've had some incredible things said about me uh, in my life as an athlete, and I've had some pretty wild things, and I'm sure this book is going to probably elicit both good and bad, and frankly, I don't give a damn. Um, I know who I am, I know who I want to be, and um, I wish I could have been a, better pers a, a different person, but I've learned a lot in my life, and uh, I think I've learned a lot from uh, growing up in a very difficult childhood, a household, um, loss of a dear brother. Um, and I think the thing that I was left with was an incredibly rich, vivid imagination, which helped me pursue my dreams, and more importantly, to live my dreams. Most people don't have a chance to do that in their lives, and I did. And for everyone who's been so nice to me in my life, thank you for my detractors. Um, that's okay, too, because you can't be perfect all the time, okay? You can't do everything to satisfy everyone. And I've always felt negative and public, uh, positive publicity uh, have been a great leveler in my life. And um, because when I was growing up, um, you know, I, the reality of my brain <coughs> being, being what fueled me and what drove me, and the reality of going home, um, were completely two different things. So I had to leave, live in two different worlds, and so I've learned to live with uh, with almost everything, to be candid with you. You alluded to the fact that the past couple of weeks haven't been fun, and, uh, and you've been known as a private person for decades. Why, why do this then? Why put yourself through something when you could have very easily just let things go? Well, I, I think, you know, as I said, I think earlier, you know, athletes, a lot of athletes have lived, lived a similar life. I, I saw something last night. I was watching a football game. It turned into look like a basketball game between uh, a junior high team and, a, and no disrespect to, to New Orleans. I mean, to uh, 
to Indianapolis. But there was a story on there last night about a kid who played for New Orleans. And I don't know if you heard this story. He was left at a at a, uh, a delinquency facility by his mother. Uh, he went in there, had a terrible way of life, and he grew up and he made something very special out of himself. And I think if you encourage one person, uh, one person that um, has great aspiration, uh, who's grown up uh, not in the best circumstances, not where there's any love and affection, um, I, I think that that's why I did it. I certainly wouldn't do something like that for money. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to never write something that wouldn't be true anyway. Uh, but there's a lot of things I've hidden in my life that I know a lot of us have experienced and frankly don't want to talk about it. And I hope it will be liberating, particularly for some young people and some athletes. I've gotten a lot of feedback from people thanking me for, um, you know, being brave enough to talk about what they faced in their life. And it wasn't, it didn't, it didn't take anything brave for me to do it. All I had to do, because I had a platform, some people never have a platform. And I'm just hopeful that people, when they read this book, um, will understand that I'm not who, I'm, I'm a flawed person. Gary, you write, uh, Justin Jackson from the Dominion Post, uh, you write in the book and, and you've talked about how there were members of your family who didn't want you to, to, to write this book or talk about these things. Just kind of wondering what has the feedback been like, you know, from family members since since the book has been. Well, I think, I think one of the most interesting ones was my sister, one of my sisters, I won't mention her name, but um, she wrote me a note and said, uh, you know, I didn't even know my brother. Um, it's pretty sad when you're in a house and no one knows who you are. Um, growing up, um, growing up where you're afraid to go home was not a fun thing, and that's why I say my ma imagination was what really fueled me and, and frankly gave me a lot of courage to uh, not write this book, but it gave me a lot of courage to want to compete and excel at the very highest of levels. And uh, it began here at the university, it obviously began at East Bank High School, but you know, here's a place that I came and, and um, you know, I learned about love uh, from two women, um, the, Nard the Nardi sisters. Um, when I came here, I, I, did, I didn't say a word. I talked way too much today, by the way, but uh, I didn't say a word. I was quiet, shy, backwards, socially inept. And these two women loved me. And uh, I've always said that uh, I wish I would have seen that at an earlier age in my life because I could have probably been different. Um, I've always been cautious about people, even though I love people. In the press, I would never uh, deny good, bad, or indifferent for someone to talk to me, I just wouldn't do it. I always tr treated them with respect. And at times, as I mentioned, there's certain things written about you that um, can be pretty raw. And the easiest thing to do is want to lash out. Uh, that's not something I would do. If, so, if someone would write something that absolutely was not true, I would call them. I wasn't going to get in a shouting contest with them. I wasn't going to get in a contest which was um, demeaning to them because they're writing their opinions. But, you know, I've read a few comments from people who um, have made comments about this book which have not been favorable to me. And uh, <clears throat> the thing I know that, that they're still speculating what I'm thinking. There's not one damn person in the world knows what I'm thinking except me. Not one. And um, every time I read something like that, I'm always tem uh, tempted to call and say, why would you continue to write things? You don't even know me. You didn't even know me when I was an athlete. Um, why would you want to do that? But as I say, sometimes um, people look at certain people and they think their life is all rosy. I've been the most blessed person in the world. I have. But yet, um, I really haven't enjoyed a lot of the ride, that's for sure. Terry Bob Herzl, uh, you say you would wish you'd been a different person. Who do you look up to? Who, who is your idea of, who would you be if you could trade, go to trade places? I think one of the greatest people I know is Willie Akers, my roommate, my lifelong friend. He's happy, he's happy, he's jovial, loves the university like I do. Um, he can find something good in everything. 
uh, I think the worst thing is not to find anything good in yourself. And um, there's a lot of times in my life um, I haven't liked myself very much. But again, um, you know, I would love to be different. But the ironic thing is, is I just love people. I mean, I really do. If I can help someone, my gosh, I'm sure going to do that. Because when I was growing up, all I wanted, you ever see a stray dog walking down the street? Pretty interesting. If somebody goes over to it, it'll either, depending on how it's been treated, it'll either react with a bark or it'll start wagging its fanny. And all it wants to be is recognized and patted. And uh, I mentioned this book, Strays, okay? Uh, at times in my life, I felt like a stray dog. Um, I did. And um, it's not the most comfortable way to feel in your life, but it, it was a huge part of my life. And today, um, you know, so many people have been so kind to me, more than kind. And those are the people that uh, hopefully will know that um, if they read this book, there was, they've been very special. And there's been a lot of special people in my life. Uh, Mickey, who I've known for years, and I'm not trying to single him out. Um, I've always, uh, when I first came to university, they had a guy here who was pretty, pretty famous in his own right, and I wasn't, and Rod Hungley. And I think Mickey had an incredible appreciation for him, and which always was nice for me to see. But I was a lot different from Rod Hungley. I didn't want to be like Rod Hungley. Uh, I was much more serious than him, and, and I wish I could have enjoyed the game the way he did. But that was never going to be me. To me, competing was war. And um, lose some wars, some skirmishes. You don't always lose a war, but I lost the wars that hurt me most. That was losing us here in 1959 to the University of California and also losing eight times the NBA Finals. Mr. West, uh, Dave McClung, WCLG here in Morgantown. I'd like to ask you if the goal that you saw in this book would be accomplished if it put some more human face on that statue out front of this building? Oh, yes. Absolutely. I think that there's a lot of ways to su success, okay? And then I constantly hear, and I'm not going to get political, but I constantly hear people talking about, you know, uh, our children are the leaders of our world. Well, well the way we treat them today, uh, to me, uh, doesn't say that. Uh, a lot of people have forgotten along the way. If it weren't for people who were involved in charities, people who love to give, people who love to pay attention to young kids with problems who are incredibly talented. And in this book, I'm, you know, I've become a real deep reader. And when I was going to university, I didn't like to read, but I love to read now. And, and I think you can learn something every day. And, and there's a wonderful book Malcolm Gladwell wrote called, uh, called The Outliers. Um, and it talks about kids there that a lot of different facets in young people's lives which contribute either to them reaching what they want to reach or achieving their goals and not being able to achieve their goals and just becoming an average person. I would hope for every West Virginia kid that they would think big, that they would have goals and please have a vivid imagination. I think the, the movie The Rocket, I mean the book The Rocket Boys, uh, October Sky, uh, when I watched that, these kids in these mountains, and at one person encouraged one person. Everyone thought they were gonna blow up everything, burn the forest down. I was a rocket boy for basketball, didn't even know it. And um, it's just something I loved. I didn't have anyone encouraging me, no one. That was just something I did for, again, I could make myself the greatest person in the world, and when I went home, I didn't feel like the greatest person in the world. 